Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Sualif. It's me, Hamid Amani, your host. Today, we're going to be talking about the future. How are we talking about the future? Why are we going to be talking about the future, even though, like, right here, do we really know what's going to happen in the future? No, but we do know that there's people who will grow older, and they will be the future, and that's, of course, the youth. We're going to be talking about the youth today, and what I mean, the first question will be answered, and I'm in the presence of Wendy Lesko, who is a legend in this field, and I'll be talking to you for about an hour or so, and hopefully a bit longer, because it's going to be, I'm excited for this, so uh, on the call, or before we got on for this live, we had a call, and we got on, and you answered the first question, which made me at ease, so I will ask you this question again so that everyone following us and watching now could uh, be at ease as well, especially if they're in my age group. So when do you stop being youth or youth, you know, when, like, am I still a member of the youth bracket? The age Are you 30? kidding? <laughs> <laughs> but that's a big debate, Hamid, which is, you know, the UN takes you to age 30 or sometimes Oh, in the mid 30s in the US, um, uh, the tendency is youth tends to be 18 and under because at 18, that's when you can vote. Um, as we know, there are efforts to in, you know, sort of change that up. Like in, at age 16, you can drive here. So there are all kinds of ways to almost make even a 16 year old more adult, but basically young people um, here, I think we talk about those 18 or maybe up to 24, but 30 and your age, I don't know. I don't know, I'm you know, they, I'm they, I'm they no don't longer, trust you. I'm no longer youth. That's the thing, yep. by international decree and agreement on the UN, I'm out of the bracket. So you didn't put them at ease. I was expecting you to say, maybe at 39, you're still in the, in the <laughs> so by but, some but, definition. <laughs> so, the but the, 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 the current work I'm doing is called youth infusion. And that's mm -hmm. not an energy drink. It's not an anti-aging beauty serum, okay? The whole idea is that regardless what age we need to like switch this whole thing up like you're young or you're middle-aged or you're a dinosaur old and like we need to be much more um age integrated and not have this age apartheid and certainly there are a lot of young people in our country in the u.s who don't want to have anything to do with anyone over 30 or quite frankly, 25, right? But there are lots of other people who say, we want to work together. We want to like, like right now, it's we're celebrating the International Day of, of Youth, which was started in 1985. And this theme is um, food insecurity and agricultural innovation and the Sustainable Development Goal too. And here, for example, we have wonderful, like intergenerational work with young people who may be like the age of your children, seven or eight, and an 80 year old. And they are very concerned about something called food deserts. What is a food Get that? desert? A food desert is where in many of our neighborhoods, especially in either very rural or very urban dense cities. You only have like a little tiny metro market or a liquor store and they sell <laughs> no fresh produce. There okay. Is, so all you're doing no, is no, eating chips. Yeah, all you're eating is chips. And so there is this that like a diet that I was I was on the I was on a diet like that for a period of my life you know what I mean part when I was in the youth right when I was yes. still defining that you know Doritos and Cheetos that's what it was <laughs> and and believe me I think 
you're normal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I know you needed that affirmation, right? Um, but but in terms of like food deserts, what what some community based organizations are with lots of different ages, but they will have like cooking classes and they'll make sure any local local produce from like broccoli and lettuce actually get shipped to this new sort of a newly created part of the store. And so then people need to learn, like get used to like Brussels sprouts or what, I don't know how to cook that, right? So they have cooking classes. So it's, it's really a lovely community project that, um, you know, it sort of ties in with International Day of, of Youth and the theme of um, agriculture and food. So just a step back before we start diving into these kind of projects, let's take it to how you were part of Youth Activism Project, right? That's one. And now over years and years, it's you are now, you've launched uh, Youth Infusion as you called it. But one of, the, one of the things I always ask guests is that, you know, why are you the right person to be talking about this subject? So just very quickly, you know, you've had a history and career in youth activism project. And if you can give us briefly what that is before we could dive into. Yeah, let me, let me bore everyone. Absolutely. Um, no, I, I've written um, several books about young people and we're talking again, quite young, young people who are 15, who are 16, and they really are change makers. And so for the last couple of decades, I've been writing, collaborating, supporting young people who are not yet 18 on whatever project they choose to do. Um, and I've launched two nonprofits co-founded with community folks. Uh, in the case of the Youth Activism Project, quick story, um, so it was co-founded with a group of 12 year old girls and they, the, the sort of catalyzing issue was girls are not going to school. They're not completing a secondary school and we want to do something about it. So quick story there. One of the things that Youth Activism Project is very proud of is that we led the national grassroots program youth driven here in the US against a lot of uh, opposition to create the UN International Day of the Girl, which is observed every October 11th around the world. And so, but one of those co-founders, 12 year old Anika Manzor became my boss. We hired her as our executive director of the nonprofit. And now she is running the ship entirely. So. What I so have been you what she started with you at the age of 12, 13? 12. Uh-huh. Yep. yep. Wow. Yep. Right. Right. Wow. And now Sorry she she just turned 30. Wow. Yep. Wow. Right. And right. She's the boss. She's, she's your she was boss. my she boss. And she, she fired <laughs> me. She didn't want anyone that old around anymore. No, I had always planned to move on. Um and now my role is, I think, much better suited to trying to convince adults to look at young people as the new thinkers, as the new producers of imagination and knowledge. And to me, that means adults need to change more because we often lose our sense of curiosity. And, and we also fear, we, we, we fear failure. Um, and for young people, I really have always believed that their mindset is one of like an inventor, an experimenter. And that's what we need. Adults need to support young people. And so, you know, whenever you have an idea or a grievance, don't just keep it to yourself. Find a few friends and begin to research what is going on and what you might be able to do. And sometimes, Sometimes it helps to find someone like me uh, or an organization that like listens and responds. Yeah. So that's why I'm I, here. I, I, I was, I'm pretty passionate. <laughs> when we're looking at things like you mentioned it now, 
importance of Youth Day, International Youth Day, what its significance. There's so many uh, pillars to that, but we can, one word that you keep mentioning and you keep bringing back is community. So the community is not just gonna be a little group of members, youth members pushing and advocating for a cause that they, they're concerned about. It, it, it's also the other side, which is, what makes up the rest of the community, teachers, legislators, lobbyists, politicians, grocery store owners, businessmen, entrepreneurs, they're all there, you know? <laughs> and how is how does it come about when, if you are young um, and you have to advocate for some cause, you will be pushed back, right? There, it's, it's part and parcel. There's people there that have established it if, it's, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We've been doing this for 15 years, 20 years, you know, where we know what we're doing. You know, right. how do you, as a young person, deal with that kind of, you know, what are, what is it? How do you deal with it? How do you go up to someone who's going to say no straight off the bat? What, is, what do you do when, you know, you're trying to face people with your ideas? Right. I, I, I mean, it is, there are so, what I, I guess the short answer would be, there isn't one roadmap. Uh, so much, I think, of the challenge is not burying that idea you have or that complaint. Um, and, and so the first thing I would always suggest is not go alone. Alone, first of all, it's not as much fun, right? So if you can find a few people, I don't care what age they are, probably not an animal though, you know, like a human, um, and begin to talk to them and expect people to be naysayers, just as you were saying, right? We know what's best. We've been doing this all these years. So let me just give an example of staying with a the theme this year of food and, and agriculture. So there is a movement in the US to like our school cafeteria food, and we're talking about not university level, but we're talking about primary and upper uh, secondary levels. Like the pizza, which is the most popular item is essentially cardboard with some red slop on it which is supposed to be tomato sauce and some <laughs> roast cheese. I mean, and they're all microwaved. So they've been- it sounds frozen. delicious. Sounds oh, lovely. It is great. I mean, I wake up in the morning going, mm, I would like some <laughs> chips and some cardboard pizza. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, next time, then, next time my wife asks me, what do you want to eat for dinner? I have the, the greatest- <laughs> right. right. And so most students are normal, like this is what we have. Just take it or throw it in the trash. You know, you don't do anything. Well, there, there, there are people around the country and we're talking, they could be 12 years old and they are weighing in with like the cafeteria manager and also the school principal and often the school district, which is a big wig. Um, and they often, the first thing they do is like create a club. I recommend that they create a name because then they sound official. It's not like, you know, Bumble, Bumble whatever here and, and Joe is here. No, we have, we have a name and you can always change the name, but that way you're like, you're real and you don't need anything, right? Uh, you, I mean, you don't need any paperwork, at least in, in the US, you know, you just say who you are and you have a mission statement, like a one sentence, like we want to improve in this case, what is served in our school cafeterias. Mm -hmm. um, it's more nutritious and more appetizing or blah, blah, blah. And, and then you go to the powers that be, but not alone because they're gonna, they're gonna push, they're gonna dismiss you, right? at least go with two other people. So you have a, you have a team, a trifecta, and, um, and expect, expect to be shut down. And this is where my mosquito 
metaphor comes in. I say, if you think you're too small to be to make a difference, you've never been in bed with a mosquito. You need it's persistence, you know. So just like if you're in, if you start a restaurant, do you expect the first restaurant that you open, the menu is going to be right? Yeah, the the promotion, the publicity is going to be right. No, you're going to have to constantly change. Think about that if you're trying to be a change maker. So coming back to the school cafeteria, one effort that's been very successful around the country has been getting more salad bars um, in, fresh salad bar. And often that comes again from locally, locally accessed uh, farms so that you're trying to help local farmers. And that's something a lot of young people um, have done. And also there's a big um, effort that has really gotten stickiness. So there are enough vegetarian options. Those are done by young people. Um, they, you know, and once you leave school, do you care about cardboard pizza? No. So you no, need to do it gonna, now. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's just one of those memories. Oh, do you remember when we were in school and we had to eat that terrible food? But this, <laughs> right? this is part of the... <laughs> This is part of it though, like one of the things is, okay, accept to be rejected, but that comes to mind experience, right? Okay, these guys are not experienced, they're just complaining and we can dumb it down. You know, where does it, where's the line between complaining and advocacy? Because yeah, right. I, before I start talking about the new media, you know, there's, there's, is it how you come across? Is it? You know, a lot of the times young people will be asked, if, you know, what's your experience? Show yeah. me, you know, you have no experience right. in this. Of, of course I don't. I'm 15. You know, <laughs> like I'm, I'm 12. And, yeah. You know, I'm but, but in, the yeah, no, and, and that is the ageism, right? The adult is like, you know, like stay in the deep freeze until you're 21 and then we'll listen to you. But But I was just talking an hour ago to a 17 year old who has worked for four years. He's about to start his fifth year working for the local summer employment agency in Rochester, New York. He started at age 14. And so he, he, you know, he provides all these paid opportunities for young people to have summer employment, summer jobs. So I think your question is so apt. Most people of all ages, right, they're, they're upset and, you know, they hate this and this is terrible and they don't do squat. I mean, that's, that's yeah. how all people are. We're talking yeah. about a slice or two of the pizza um, of humanity who actually <laughs> like I like that everything and knowing, tonight, I guess what I'm having for dinner tonight is going to be pizza. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I know, right, right. But but yeah, that a lot of let's get to that circle though with the pizza, right? Because yeah. part of it is okay, if you're in a classroom or you're in a community and there is a thousand people that go to this building every day, how many of them are gonna help you with your cause or right? how many of them are you know, i in a you know, a part of my life I worked as a promoter or we were doing surveys in the, in in town about, you know whatever research we were doing at the time and you're standing in the road with flyers or you're asking people to give you two minutes and in you know 99 percent of the time you're just ignored yes. you know so yes so mm -hmm. if we were if the community or the school or the members were how what what percentage of the pizza slices will they make up is it eight uh no, I, I, I think we're talking always about a minority. Uh, okay. and, and, you know, it, it's, it's, you start small. And what okay. I would do in sort of going back to the how to is with like, let's say you have a core group of two other people, three of you who like want to stop this or want to want to create something. Okay. Either pro or con and you do role plays and one of the people is that naysayer and you practice how do you talk back to them and you don't need you know you don't need public speaking training you just need to know what you have to have enough facts on your side and so one thing often I have worked with young people 
who I said, gather some evidence, like do your homework. So yeah. do a survey, you know, and even if you only get, you, you talk to 70 people um, in your school about to get their input, then you can say, you know, 53% of those surveyed said this, all of a sudden you, you're like a data scientist. Like <laughs> they, don't, they don't have that info, right? Gonna, and they it, don't it, have information that we do. <laughs> And, they, and that gives that gives yourself the, the those those change makers that kind of confidence that they aren't just blah 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 right so you do need to have but I think your 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 point is so well taken young people need to be better prepared and ready because it is so much harder for them to be taken seriously. So one of the other tricks, staying with food right now and cardboard pizza is in a school setting, it's very helpful to get one teacher and maybe one parent to be your advisors because the principal or whoever is the decision maker is going to be more apt to listen to the adults because they're the natural authority figures for the students. So, you know, um, but but it, it all works. I think the one, one thing I would really hope people will think, you do not need to know all the skills. Like we'll talk about social media as a way to organize, like boom. But you do need to get your facts and you need to be smart about what you're saying, that elevator pitch, right? But you don't have to know everything. It's again, be inventive. You know, like again, it's it's that's the mind. If if you know exactly how things are going to go, do something else, right? This is if you're trying to make change in your school or community or at the country level, you know, every everything that happens means you have to you have to adapt and re-strategize and see that as a fun chessboard game, right? Find the fun in it though. But yes. I, I was trying to push this part of the conversation as much as I can, but just like the world we're living in today, it, yes. you know, it's social media and digital tools and communication. And because you're talking in, in terms of how to organize, how to, create a fan base how to get support how to there are so many tools yes. and is there a point now where these tools have just become kind of like every other day someone's coming up with a cause every other day someone's creating a facebook page every other day someone's creating you know uh, a ngo or a nonprofit or a you know right again right. The basis for me, it's, you know, the principle is, okay, there's a problem. We want to solve it. There are people who are making the decisions that we will not drive this change until we get their attention and the support of the people around us. Now, if you have 20 people all doing their little thing in their little area, that doesn't help get, you know, if there was a common cause, it doesn't help get you to that common goal. Right. So where right. does it, you know, we talk about complaining and, and the way the youth are looked at in terms of oh, the, you know, lack of experience and oh, just say no, or they don't have the experience or no one's with them as a, you know, a role or an adult or a father figure or a fact person or someone who's, you know, knows <laughs> someone who's the authority um, that can help, you know. But now with tools like Facebook, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn, creating your own website in like five minutes with yep. all of these other website developers, GoFundMe campaigns, things like that. Is it too much for both <laughs> sides? Is it too much for the young people? And is it too much for the, you know, the legislators or the people who are responsible in, in, making those decisions how do you filter through that like where yes come up with a campaign come up with a slogan get a name become you know 
make mm -hmm. it look uh, that it's you know legitimate, right? And then you know there's there's like we could do a Google search now and get twelve thousand templates of what official looks like. You know what I mean? <laughs> so so right. you yeah, said yeah. you don't need to have all the skills, but it's like almost you know access to a lot of things now. You know where you can fake it till you make it there i say yeah don't you think though so i don't have to answer your complex question don't you actually think social media it is still such a young baby of course you know? and and that so what we're seeing is the beginning of chaos and it will work itself out certainly you are right that that you know, everybody now here in the US, I would say the trend I've really noticed since Insta uh, and TikTok are, are like a part of everyday life of young people is that they, they, they can reach out and not feel as alone. So for example, I was talking two days ago to um, an organization called Project Nine and they have started a, a nonprofit. You know, these are high school students. And yes, just as you said, Hamad, you know, yes, now they can put it on their resume and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But, but the, the founder is, you know, she's on Instagram and Twitter and, and recruiting for state chapters. So in every, in all 50 states, they wanna get someone who steps up and says, I want to be the state president, the chapter head of the state. Now, the trick is that social media that is great if you want to have that, you know, beyond your own school, beyond your immediate community. But then the whole thing is how do you keep those people engaged? How do you, how do you have that sort of buy-in and, and, and shared architecture in creating everything you're doing and that's the hard work of all of this but the most successful campaigns that i see for young people are when they have a very clear goal it's not let's you know world peace it is um for example because of covid especially and the isolation um the need for more mental health services is probably almost the top issue in the minds of those 21 and under. And so, for example, I'm working with an organization that for the last four years, well before COVID, has been pushing for a campaign called Counselors, Not Cops. They don't want armed police in their schools. They want that money to go for school psychologists um, and counselors, and they are having the fight of their lives. But literally, um, yes, yes they are. <laughs> literally, yeah. No, so, thank you for that. That is yeah. not your your. You picked up I mean, on I say it like it's that, so but it is, it is. You know, it's we're sitting here in Qatar. Very different dynamic. Very different. But we get the new Twitter. We have, and, and it's just where everyone will have their opinion on how things should be and how things could be. But when you hear about causes like this, you just, you know, there is a literal problem. And if it doesn't happen that there is a discussion between someone who is the student in this case, will it, you know, it won't be it. Like that is the first part of the change, right? It has to, if the, you know, they have to be the drivers themselves, you know, because Thank you. And, and it, you've done something. I was no, just going to say also naming the problem. You know, yeah. like I sort of was, was flipping saying have an official campaign name, but to name the problem means you can then recruit and try to get some sincere people who are willing to really step up and like and like engage in and do research and do writing and be the digital manager and do outreach and then you normally have 
folks that inter, are, are the ones who really want to talk to decision makers, whether it be a local uh, school official or a local legislator. But I think you, you, you actually hit on something very important, which is most of us don't even get to naming a problem. And then most of us do not commit to working on that problem. And I do think that's where social media is both good and bad. But overall, I would say, thank goodness, because yes. it is such a research portal. And for example, on, on Counselors Not Cops campaign, the folks in one state will connect and learn about what students in another city with similar population are doing and they share and they're still doing their own thing. But that is almost an answer to also that wonderful point you raised, which is that that's almost how we grow beyond our little fiefdom, our little, our little cabal to <laughs> being a larger community, right? And, 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 and collaborating and sharing information and also less lonely and again, Ah, your word, more fun. <laughs> yes, right? yes. I like fun. Hey, what am I going to say? Fun is fun is fun. Like, who's going to say no to that? But this is the power of community, right? Um, it is. Like Clubhouse, for example, just on the touch on mental health. Um, there's a lot that needs to be done in terms of access to mental health. There's a stigma attached to mental health within this part of the world, I think. Oh, it, at least yeah. from what I know directly, that oh, this is a Western concept, you know. Ah, uh, uh -huh. This is not for us, and this is you know generational thing, right? You have the mm -hmm. old generation say like we made it out okay. Yeah, Good yeah. For you, <laughs> well done. <laughs> <laughs> Things have changed, you know, <laughs> and it's not oh, you know, it's it. There's actual effects. People are you know. Uh, in pain they're suffering um and yes. when tools like clubhouse happen you see the power of community where people random strangers and i like to hop from one room to the next to just because i'm nosy i want to know what's happening and it became this uh there's a lot of people who are just sharing their stories in terms of just for the sake of sharing their story knowing that they're not going through something that is a stigma or is socially unacceptable they're all from the same demographic they're all from the same area and they learn and share stories from each other and that loneliness that you keep talking about is yeah. not eradicated but that sense of safety that i'm not alone i'm you know right. this is okay and that was just people to people so if i dread to think what would have happened in the sense of these platforms not being able to exist or didn't exist and communities like that where would they go where could they seek help so whether if you need the counselor psychologist psychiatrist whatever stages it is it doesn't start until you find kind of you know someone else nearby that's going through the same thing you go hey you what really okay let's see who else is you know <laughs> is going through this and it turns into a, a room of like 100 people just sharing stories so there is Absolutely. a positive side to it, you know, but because, and, and, no, no, go ahead. Uh, I'll keep talking until you tell me, shut um, up. That, um, <laughs> shut up then. <laughs> uh, no, I was just going to say that um, there is a, a really healthy um, effort of this sort of peer-to-peer -peer counseling. Um, and what has scared me um, is, well, what if someone may have ideas about harming themselves um, when do you know you need to probably get that person connected to at least some professional who might be provide safety for them? And I've been quite impressed, quite frankly, by the like a again, a 16 year old um, that I was working with in this national coalition that I've been involved with, all run by young people and how they, they, they're doing exactly what you're talking about with Clubhouse, which is the, that courage to have a safe and brave space to talk about their anxiety and their depression and possibly suicide ideation, right? Um, and, but, but I'm impressed by how often they know, well, we need, we need 
we need an adult probably. We should not try to, and, and I could not have done that at their age. I would not have had those skills. And I think that's one thing that is very exciting is young people, I don't know. I mean, I do feel they are pretty smart overall. I mean, they get, <laughs> they get stupid information on the internet, but <laughs> oh, thank you. That is beautiful. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yes, yes. There's, there's just this there's always a danger though, in terms of, like you said, with, you know, whether it's advocating for mental health or be cleaner streets or better food, or um, there's the danger of kind of tunneling. If you have, and that tunneling gets to a point of like, okay, we will all focus on this and they disengage from other things. So sometimes you would see uh, youth programs for like cleaner beaches or better access to health care or better access or creation of mental health, <laughs> you know, uh, right. they don't exist. We need it. <laughs> Can we, hey, hello, you know, but yeah. it gets right. to a point where you'll get to, there'll be other um, causes or problems that they would disengage from. So where is that line of, you know, there are issues that are affecting you here today, right now. Right. And there, right. if there are issues that might, you know, if didn't, we could go out without for the next half a year, two years and really start seeing it, right? But right. what, you know, how do you keep the conversation alive? How do you not get demotivated? How do you make sure that you are aware of your surroundings and not disengage from other causes or um, issues that, you know, will take effect in your life, uh, you know, two or three years down the line. So. Woo. Uh, thank you for a, another really simple question. I, 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 do, so see, I, like to, I like to take my time crafting these very simple questions. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. So to me, the 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 short simple stupid response is i would prefer young people are involved in what in something okay uh, the the whole idea that um they have to see the connection and intersectionality between issues that's great most people of all ages do not do that so i'm not quite <laughs> sure why we should, we should have that high expectation. I also have another, just to make you laugh, okay, is I, I think that if you start, that's the hardest part, is starting. Yeah. If you start, it's like a pistachio nut. Once you have one, do you want another one? Of course. You can never, like, just, you're not just going to go, uh, I'll, I'll just have the one. Thank you. <laughs> And, and so much of it is once you start, even if you stumble, even if you fail, that is more than most people ever do. So I would say start, if you care about beach cleanup, please in any way start, because then again, the mind of an inventor, you will, it will then take you somewhere else. If you say, I have to figure all of this out and I have to see how it affects um, our oceans and our seafood, and, and I, I'm not even good at, at extrapolating here, but um, I mean, then I you. what happens? You're paralyzed and you say, oh, well, this isn't good enough. It's not full enough. Again, as a young person, I have seen literally thousands and worked with thousands of young people if they just start the earlier, the better, whether it's yeah. zero waste cleanup or um, um, even the, we use styrofoam um, containers still in our cafeterias, they're getting rid of those that, you know, okay. so like, do you have an idea? What's, what's good? Or you're mad about something, just, move on that and if we had 
not two slices of the full pizza, but if we got double that, think about <laughs> community and community action and collective spirit. Um, and yes, there'll always be the challenges of we only work with these folks and and we don't care about this issue. But I, I, I guess my short answer would be participate. And, and there's no minimum age for civic participation and, and leadership. I think that's another word that's problematic. I mean, I mean, I'll be careful about that statement. If there's a bunch of five-year-olds running around asking for more lollipops in school, there's gonna be, there's gonna be, a, you know, <laughs> am I not, but, am I but not? Just, you know? But, but, but wait. Um, I mean, so, my daughter's coming up to me. Like, I needed ice cream. I only, I only had three today. <laughs> you know, right, I could right. be okay with. <laughs> yeah, she's being a you good advocate. Yes. Of five for more ice cream. It's like I'm not going to be convinced just because you're. There's a okay, hundred so <laughs> let's, let's for the for the parents out there in the audience. I have an expression which is, and I have two sons. Okay. Um, they're, um, they're, they're ancient already because I am, you know, beyond ancient. Um, but I, I like the idea of parents have a third ear. So okay. your, your sons and daughters are going to talk all the time about like stuff that drives you crazy, uh, stupid ideas like lollipops and ice cream. But that third ear, when they say something, that is deserves like let's talk about this engage yeah. with them so very quickly just you know very quick short story when i was driving my 7 year old to soccer practice football here and we heard thank on the radio thank you um that there was going to be um uh, a government hearing in our in our Co local community to ban cigarette vending machines. These are machines, you know, where you pull the lever and you get your Marlboro. Well, Morgan was saying, you know, I, I see so many, so many guys who are just, you know, a bit older than me and they're buying, even though it's not allowed. So I listened to this, right, as a parent, I didn't uh, talk about the lollipops or ice cream, but I heard this. Ran with it, didn't you? And ultimately, they um, went to cigarette vending machines in three places, and younger Max put in the quarters, and they were sure they were going to be arrested. Nobody cared. Nobody cared. <laughs> and they went with their poster, with the photographs of the machines and their contraband, their cigarettes that they had purchased. And they spoke at the government, uh, this was the county council, and they beat the tobacco lobbyists out of the water and vending machines got banned. So as a parent, if I had not had an engaged third year, eh, yeah. eh, I don't care. So yeah. to me, listen, you know, like, we need young people who think differently from us. That is how we grow as, as countries and as communities. It's, it shouldn't be something we suffocate. In fact, we should, we should uplift it. And as adults, we need to be, um, the, this student just said to me yesterday, it's so interesting that adults ask me to have, to really be knowledgeable and be open-minded, but they aren't. <laughs> yeah on that point let me tell you growing up the, the 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 consensus was if you're asking questions you're always going to get you won't get an answer and you would be you know like you're just right. your basic curiosity was killed because of you'll get mm -hmm. punished or you're not this is not for you to know uh, and this is in school and in in local community and wherever it was whether it was the mosque the youth club the school the you know being held back after school and still asking the same question that you really wanted an answer to but no one would answer it right, right. <laughs> and they would just yeah. tell you that you shouldn't ask so you end up creating a group of people that are either 
always kind of anti-authority or just very afraid to express and just can't right. formulate their own yeah. opinion, you know? Right. Um, right. Right. And for, for that, as a, you know, call myself a product of that, but if, if we today, I mean, if I didn't know this now, I probably wouldn't be able to have more tolerance and be more empowering for, you know, younger people. Because now I know that, hey, listen, I need, if they're not heard, you know, if they don't feel like we've heard them, you know, right. they'll, right. they'll, they'll just be suppressed. You know, they're, of course, they're going to want to, everyone wants to feel like they've been working hard on something and there's a result, whether they're yep. five, 11, 60, who cares? You know, yes. I want to feel heard. I've been doing something. Right. Anyone, right. you like it? Do you not? Is yes. this good? Am yes. I right? Am I wrong? And is it, can I, is it fair to say that without older uh, empowerment or older generation kind of paying attention and empowering this, that there will there be less activism or, or voices and ideas coming from the youth? Or are we okay to think that now with technology mm. and the tools available and access to information and communication, that this is actually much easier now for you know the next generation to get their voices across um i i think the answer is yes they really can they have they're more soapboxes they're more microphones right uh right. it's sort of like citizen journalists right we don't it's not only the credential journalists um so it's opening up that democracy and of course with that you get all kinds of stuff right um but I, I think one of the points you're leading to is the generation gap um, between those who really use social media and rely on um, the internet exclusively for information, which is very true with young people, of course, and then their parents and older people where that would not be the go, the go place. And so- Use it, I'll tell you, like this is, hands down happens in every household in Qatar, I'm sure, where, yeah. you know, you've got the family group and your great aunt or grandmother is sending clippings of the news, the real <laughs> news. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> I don't that group. Say clipping. is that like, like, like you use scissors? Like no, no. <laughs> <laughs> like media clips, you know, media clipping. Sorry. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. I, I yeah. was having it's a fun. screenshot from a screenshot from Twitter. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. She's probably reading it with her uh, <laughs> knitting night, knitting. What do you call them? Knitting sticks. Trying to like scroll yeah. through her Twitter. No, it's not that kind of. It's not that bad. <laughs> that bad? I don't know. Never seen it. But they would, you know, it would be a screenshot of a tweet or a screenshot of a headline or some joke that's going around and then they're shared and they're like can you believe this and there's yeah. outrage and then a yeah. 12 year old be like uh ah, it's fake it's not fake yeah. it's fake right. <laughs> it's fake right <laughs> right they're looking through the group and going oh this is interesting so well, there and, is, there is and, and one thing that is not youth led it's very much um adult led in in especially in schools is that media literacy um and you know like Okay, so if it's a .org or .gov, that, that is different from like .com and be careful, they probably are selling you stuff on .com, blah, blah, blah. And then the whole point of a lot of this media literacy curriculum in K-12 schools is to take it home, to yeah. teach their elders about what is part of their life, you know? And, 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 you know, that's going to be very interesting how that washes out. I work with, um, uh, I partner with an organization called Yes K-12 and Gen Yes. And these are tech ed students, K through 12, kindergarten through 12, who learn how to be technologists. And then they help the teachers with like hardware problems and Wi-Fi problems in the school. And they're also doing that with like nonprofit groups in the community, helping build websites and all that. So you have this very interesting thing that still is happening, which is totally a role reversal. Young people are more expert on all of this 
than most adults. Uh oh, yeah. don't like yeah. that. What yeah. is that? Our power, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it is. I mean, listen, me. I'll ask my younger brother to. You know, I my internet's terrible at home. Hey, baby bro, come and do the thing. Oh, you need a router and you need this. And I'm like, yeah, hey, hey, hey. hands off. Right. You clearly right. know. Right. I will right. judge the results. If my internet, if my Xbox is still lagging after this, <laughs> then you've not done a good job. And then he comes in and he fixes it and he's like, yeah, you're good now. Yeah. And everything right. is it's fantastic. I have a yeah. lower ping. I'm not a gamer. <laughs> I don't even know. I didn't even know that ping was a thing. And then he's like, oh, your ping is too high, bro. I'm like, okay, thanks. <laughs> Don't even know what that means. Um, but yeah, at the same time, if we are just on, you know, if we could talk about like going back to my history of saying we were in a place where you can ask questions and things like that. There are still places where there's a stigma attached to, you know, people expressing themselves, uh, people oh, yeah. sharing ideas questioning authority, questioning the norm, questioning the status quo, accepting uh, differences, right. you know? And that right. will lead to a lot of people who are younger being suppressed still yes. today. So how yeah. do you engage yeah. those young people when you feel like they're, you know, they're in a corner and they're, or everything is stacked against them and they're like, oh, uh, I don't know what to do. So I'll just curl up and hope to just make it through this period of my life you know and yeah remember, well it, yeah don't you feel like life gets better as you get older i mean it you know being yeah, a young and then you have kids and then it's, it's like, ah. no i'm just i'm just joking <laughs> but, but i would say again coming back to the media uh, socials um that if you live in a small town in um idaho and you are really not like people in your small town. You're 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 grappling with, let's just say, depression, right? Yeah. Um, and it is not okay to talk about that. Um, the fact that you could go online, and you probably not only in your state have maybe a a a, a, a team to team helpline to call or some. But you also can learn about what young people are doing elsewhere, which may not help because you still may feel too alone and suffocated, but at least you are aware more is going on. Again, I don't think any of this is easy. I would be, I would never say if, if you're planning just to do a project that you know, like a clothing drive for um, survivors of a natural disaster. That will be that will be great. You will not you will not meet resistance. You will not um, you will not fail. Anything you do will be a contribution. Now, if you want to set up a system where the community really helps people who are survivors for long-term issues, whether it's mental health or housing or income, that's gonna be a gargantuan project. But that's more young people possess the compassion, the humanity, the natural altruism, and really a sense of community. It may only be with their own age group and younger peers and near peers, that is a great thing we're living in. And I do think um, in America, the, the, the younger generation, what we call Generation Z, that doesn't mean zero, okay? <laughs> um, uh, or Zorro, um, but the, it is the most diverse population we've ever had. These are people right. born after 1997. And so right. there is this, we still are totally split. If you live in a big city, if you live in a rural area, nobody, I mean, there's such division, but I am very hopeful that this new generation sees we need to work together, again, your word, in community on common issues for the common good. But don't wait until you have a perfectly tuned piano because by that time, 
you're my age and you haven't done anything. I'm, I'm, how old are you? Just that, I'm not gonna do that. I am 71. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. You actually, one, you actually answered. And two, uh, I'm a little surprised. Uh, you, you know, I'm not, I'm just, I don't know what to say. I'm gobsmacked. You don't, oh, I'm I don't so glad know I, what I could you make you did. quiet for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Many have failed. Many have failed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, There's to... one other issue I'd love to talk about briefly that's brewing in our country. Go ahead. Which is, we have, we have a, a great deal happening with George Floyd and police brutality, and we have a huge, huge issue with immigration. But there's another issue that young people with whom I've been working for now a bunch of years, who are, it's a lot of opposition, even from their own peer group, and it's to allow, you can drive in our country at 16. Yeah. And you, you work and pay taxes at 16. Um, so why are you denied being able to vote at least for local elected officials who just determine like the parks and the libraries and blah, blah, blah. And so um, we have now five small cities um, where young people now have managed to convince their peers. Most young people don't, don't they, they have internalized youth oppression and adultism. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't want my friend. They're, 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 they're impulsive. They're, they're crazy. Don't let them vote. Um, they don't know, they don't know anything. So, so there's been a, a bunch of campaigns and in these localities where 16 and 17 year olds now can vote for your mayor and your local townspeople, um, their voter turnout is double that of the older people, which is, I would never have predicted that. That's and in the, the big city of San Francisco, um, which is, you know, tremendous income inequality and a tremendous problem with people who don't have housing and can't afford housing, um, they have tried twice, very much youth-driven efforts, very sophisticated campaigns. And they are within, you know, 10,000 votes of getting this passed. So it's a, it's a vote 16, uh, it's a good hashtag to follow. Um, that is something I think maybe by the time I'm, I'm dead, it will happen. It will be the norm. Um, in and what that means is elected officials yeah. will respond, will actually that you know that those questions you asked or me earlier, represent. how do you pay attention? Now, yeah. maybe not as much as to elders, but at least it changes the power equation. And yeah. I'm very excited in my idealism at my advanced age that I do think this is one piece of growing our democracy and citizen participation. For us, we're at the, in Qatar, it's at the early stages of citizen participation in lawmaking. And one of the biggest things is that the right to vote. So for us, it's still early in that, yeah. but it's great to see that on the other side of the world that they're trying to get more people to vote from a younger, age bracket and it makes sense like just straight off the bat if i can well, get a license look, if i can get a license at, to drive in right. at 60 then why right. can't i then, vote for the guy who's you know putting the speed bumps in the middle of the road you know what i mean exactly and the youth bulge you know around the world i mean we have yeah. the the demographics are rolling toward young people and so that is one one way to try to get them to say, oh, you matter. Um, don't don't wait. Get involved now. And New Zealand has dropped the age to sixteen. Uh, Brazil, Austria, um, a bunch of other countries, and Scotland is probably the next. Um, so there, there. This is a an, an international movement um, about suffrage, and so yeah, it's a fun thing to watch. I'll I'll follow it for sure. I'm writing it down. Great. Um, one thing we didn't just 
before I check the comments or questions, I think we're okay for time. Um, one thing we didn't really talk about is at home. You know, we talked about the community, the school, the the, the impact that you can have, what the to what tools are. But a lot of the times, it's what younger people feel like they are. You know, they're they're most valuable and they're most uh, giving and they're most compassionate. Their most empathy is when they leave the house. Yes, you know, because at home, my at home might be this. You know. The clash of opinion might, yeah. you know, it's like a cultural stigma, like how, you know, for us, for example, there's in our culture, respect the elderly, beautiful. You know, there's yes. ways to deal with the elderly, how to say hello to them, their status in this, you know, in the family, the hierarchy, all of these things. Yeah. But in terms of conversation, there's still conversation etiquette, how you can, how you talk to the elder, how you how you, you know, how you exchange ideas with your father, older brother, uncle, and so on and so forth, right? But that can also become a, you know, it could have an adverse effect if you are trying to get a conversation going, because, you know, you're not supposed to, oh, you, you things, oh, and how dare you disrespect your own, what did I say? You ask this and this and this and this. And so if it's not, you know, what, what can be done inside that mm -hmm. to kind of narrow that gap, you know, from a parent's mm -hmm. uh, older generation, get them to kind of reignite their curiosity and say, right. all right, let me lend and list that third ear that you were talking about. How are, are is the youth more responsible for trying to push that idea or is it for, you know, the parents or the older generation to submit to the fact that, oh, there are new ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, but most of the time, again, this will be in a household setting, you know. Oh, uh, yeah. Where, where yeah. does that. You so know, a, a couple examples that are are maybe sort of more the optimistic side is you know, you have a lot of people who have immigrated and they, they know English. And so they're helping their parents where English is a second language or they don't have that mastery. Um, and for example, applying to colleges, they are first generation university students. So the, the you know, I, I have been so humbled by these, students who they do so much in the home trying to help their parents understand what's going on and that's one piece and then you have you have more privileged families often who are working almost on a joint project together you know like sort of coming back to you know how can we help this local farmer get their their food to the local restaurants like that can that can sometimes work um and then you have like black lives matter and you've got truly intergenerational people um in families and large the whole relative